Um, it's interesting when Cosmopolitan tells you that your state is one of the worst states for women to live in, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> so um, at this time we have another legislature I'd like to introduce. If you're in the 85th district, Representative Nino Vitale would represent you in Columbus. pro-life always is a voice for the voiceless in Columbus. Day in, day out, you will find Representative Vitale speaking for the voiceless. So at this time, Representative Vitale, thank you for coming. Thank you all for being here today. I just have a few quick words. 23,000 per year. This is how many babies are aborted each year in the state of Ohio. Many of these abortions performed by organizations that are using your tax money. Planned Parenthood receives in excess of half a billion dollars each year, more than 40% of its operating budget from local, state, and federal funding. Shameful. Exactly. Shameful. It is shameful. These people shouldn't be defunded, they should be put in jail. Yeah. 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 A few things you've already heard. Gator, the president of Planned Parenthood's medical director, a top level position, is seen haggling and negotiating over prices for baby parts with great amusement. Well, let me agree to find out what other affiliates in California are getting. And if they're getting substantially more, then we can discuss it still. It has to be big enough to make it worthwhile for me. Maybe so she can get her Lamborghini. Another Planned Parenthood worker. It had a face. Its nose was very pronounced. I'm looking at this fetus, and its heart is beating. I don't know if that constitutes it's technically dead or it's alive. Really? Because I do. I bet all of you do. This is Holly O'Donnell, a former procurement technician at STEM, at STEM Express. After showing her the child's beating heart, they told her, this is a really good fetus and it looks like we can procure a lot from it. This is a raw material? This is a human being made in the image and likeness of God with an eternal and everlasting soul. Farrell added that she found dissecting aborted babies sickening on some levels, but it's fun. Near the end of the new 10 and a half minute long video that recently came out, the seventh one, O'Donnell said after an abortion she would often hold the child's body in her hands and ponder what the child's future may have been. 57 million were approaching, 57 million. And, and we're worried about Cecil the lion. So, so the speaker before me mentioned the elected officials and a presidential candidate was asked this past week whether he respects Roe v. Wade. He said Republicans focus too much on abortion. Obviously it's the law of the land and we live with that law now. I don't live with that law. I haven't lived with that law for the over 13 years I've been fighting for the voiceless. Really, we focus too much on abortion. Well, what's more important, spending and debt? How about national security or immigration? Healthcare, tax reform, the Second Amendment, judicial overreach, education. These are extremely important to me. But I'm gonna change the game and put the presidential candidate in the womb. Now what's most important? Are you worried about the border? Are you worried about your firearm rights? I'm an NRA instructor, I care deeply about that. But if I'm in the womb, yeah. now what's the most important thing? And who's there to defend me and my rights? 1963, heard of a man named Martin Luther King. He wrote letters from a Birmingham jail, and he said, since we so diligently urge people to obey the Supreme Court's decision, 1954, outlawing 
segregation in the public schools, at first glance, it may seem rather paradoxical for us to break laws. How can we advocate breaking some laws and obeying others? The answer lies in the fact that there are two types of laws, just and unjust. I would be the first to advocate obeying just law. One has not only a legal but a moral responsibility. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. I'm going to take you back even further. In the year 1240, some guy named Thomas Aquinas wrote, Laws can be just if they require or even permit murder. Here they are contradicting natural law, and it is never permissible to obey such laws. So, friends of life, there is indeed unjust law, and I'm not ever going to live with Roe v. Wade. Ever. Until that stain is removed from our Constitution, and there isn't one single child killed, burned out, and dismembered in the womb by organizations like this, I will not stop fighting, and I know most of you here will not either. We will continue Amen. fighting. How do we fix this? America needs re renewal. We know this. I agree it's, it's not going to be fixed only through politics. The church and family need renewal. Our kids, your grandkids, don't ever stop. We, ha we have a, a, the next door neighbor's kids. Talk to them. Say things. We've, we've got to open the door to these things and start the discussion. It's really hard for me now to see the Judeo-Christian culture that started this country. Very, very difficult. But that doesn't mean we can't bring it back. George Washington said, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. George Washington, religion and morality are indispensable supports. All the folks who talk to you about separation of church and state, really? John Adams said our Constitution was made for a religious and moral people. Battle Hymn of the Republic. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Really? Separation of church and state? These folks knew without a moral foundation, we're toast. We're simply toast. Just ask the kids here. Oh, I'm sorry, there aren't any kids here. Planned Parenthood? Whose parenthood are they planning? I believe we can turn the state and nation around. We have to push hard on our elected officials and get them to do what we the people want. But we also have to purify and sanctify those closest to us. And that starts with me. I stand before you today. Some days I can't get past the first commandment. Really, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no strange gods before me. I just, I really, I struggle. But I will continue to try and fight and sanctify myself and my family and those closest to me. I have great influence on those folks, so do you. Should we push our elected officials? We have a super majority, 65 Republicans in the State House, 24 signed on to the defund Planned Parenthood. I appreciate the clapping, but that, that's, I don't say that to be happy. That's horrid. It is horrible. That's right, it should be every one of the 65. Well, we're not, we're only asking for no taxpayer money to go to these folks. And like I said in the beginning, uh, that's not good enough for me. There should be people, there, uh, I came in and there was a police officer and I thought, you know what, there should be about 40 of them here at 10 o'clock when this place opens to haul these folks to jail. Forget taxpayer uh, funding and defunding. Yes. You know, I thought about something. The dentist who shot Cecil the Lion, he's in hiding. He can't go to his practice. But the Planned Parenthood folks are having salad and wine out in public. This is, this is what America's turning into. Um, we can only save these babies by first working to educate these people around us, folks. Uh, I urge you to aim your passions not only at elected officials, but at those closest to you, your own family, your friends, your grandkids. Fire them up. Educate them about who to vote for. We must get God back in this country. Or liberty will be the God that fails us.
because government and liberty's direct end should be to allow all men to do our duty, to honor God and worship Him. That is the only way to change this trajectory we are on. One person, one mind, one heart at a time. God bless you for coming and God bless America.